here from across our land as we celebrate the birth of our beloved nation. We give thanks for those who have chosen to wear the cloth of our country as we remain mindful of those who are unable to be with us this evening, particularly those who are deployed and especially those who have given the last full measure of devotion. Be with us through the night, and as the sky is lit with fireworks from above, instill in us a renewed sense to work towards life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness for all people. Bless this food and those who prepared it, that we might be filled with the strength to always seek after the more perfect union that our founding fathers intended. All this we pray in your most holy name. Amen. Amen. It is now my honor to introduce our First Lady of the United States, Dr. Jill Biden. <laughs> Thank you, Chaplain Irwin. And thank you to the USO for helping to make this event so special. Good evening and welcome to the White House. As a military mom and as your first lady, I'm honored to share this day with you. You, the members of our armed forces, military families, survivors and caregivers, preserve our independence by choosing to put our country's safety above your own every single day. The, yes, clap for them. <laughs> the way you heed the call of duty without complaint, the way you build communities and give back to your neighbors, you are the best of our nation, the heart of our strength and the hope of our future. You inspire us to rise to that same call of service, to show up for each other in big ways and small ones. So thank you for all that your families do. God bless you, enjoy the barbecue, and have a happy 4th of July. And now, it's my pleasure to introduce your Commander-in-Chief, my husband, Joe Biden. Well, Chaplain, thank you uh, for getting us started. And, uh, you know, we wish for good weather. You're probably all going, I wish it was cooler right now. But thank you all for being here. Good evening, my fellow Americans. Today we mark the 246th anniversary of our independence as a nation and recommit, recommit ourselves to the great experiment of America. And while the events of 1776 were remote in time, their meaning is real, and vivid, and continually unfolding. Don't worry, we got babies at home. It's okay. <laughs> children are allowed to cry. For America is always becoming, always on the move, always a work in progress. That's the key word, a key idea, a keynote in the life of our nation, progress, forward motion, the creation of possibilities, the fulfillment of promises. That's the American story. And you all know well, it's not a simple one. It never has been. It's often been the case that after we've taken giant steps forward, we've taken a few steps backwards. And after doing the hard work of laying the foundation of a better future, the worst of our past has reached out and pulled us back on occasion. But I know this, that from the deepest depths of our worst crises, we've always risen to our higher heights. We've always come out better than we went in. We've been tested before, just as we're being tested today, but we've never failed. 
because we have never walked away from the core beliefs and promises that define this nation. Chief among those promises is the proposition that we are all created equal. We say that so often the time you're a kid in school. Sometimes we wonder sometimes if they're just rhetoric. But that's, we're an idea, the only country based on an idea, not geography, not religion, not ethnicity, but an idea. We're all created equal. The laws are instituted among people to protect the vulnerable, to check those with power, and to guarantee the pursuit of justice. And to realize these promises requires a principled patriotism, a patriotism that recognizes that no person, no party, no interest can take precedent over the American project, a project that has come up short in many ways, but which continues even in this hour, a project that says we're all in this together, and the ambitions of a few cannot be allowed to prevail over the aspirations of the many. That's how I see America on July the 4th, as big and a big-hearted place where we debate and disagree, yet where we're united by a love of country. And as it's been before in our history, in times of war and division, of growth and change, the 4th of July comes at a critical moment. Our economy is growing, but not without pain. Liberty is under assault, assault both here and abroad. In recent days, there's been reason to think that this country is moving backward, that freedom is being reduced, that rights we assume were protected are no longer. A reminder that we remain in an ongoing battle for the soul of America, as we have for over 200 years. I know it can be exhausting and unsettling, but tonight, I want you to know we're going to get through all of this. For all that we have faced, that we are going to get through this, and look how far we've come. We're reclaiming our way of life in a pandemic. Vaccines are nearly available to every American. Restrictions lifted the 4th of July, together again at the White House. And for all the challenges, America has the strongest economy in the world. More people working and starting businesses, more young people graduating from high school and college than ever before. I just returned from an important trip, the military will understand, to Europe, the NATO meeting. We're relying on what we can do to rally the free world to defend freedom. Before I left for Europe, I signed a law the first real gun safety law in 30 years. And things will get better still, but not without more hard work together. You all heard what happened. You all heard what happened today. But each day, we're reminded there's nothing guaranteed about our democracy, nothing guaranteed about our way of life. We have to fight for it defend it, and earn it by voting, to refine, evolve, and extend the calling of America to move forward boldly and unafraid. And this day reminds us of what brought us together long ago, what binds us still, and at our best, what we strive for. It's we the people, not a hollow phrase in America, we the people doing all we can to ensure that the idea of America, the cause of freedom and justice and equality, does more than survive the divisions of our time, but that it shines like the sun to light up the future of our world. I know, I know we can do this. I know many Americans look around today and see a divided country and are deeply worried about that fact. I understand, but I believe we're more united then we are divided. Even more, I believe it's a choice we make, and I believe it's within our power to choose unity and unity of purpose. As I look out tonight here at the White House, I see so many military families who understand the essential American truth. It's the greatest honor to serve as your Commander-in-Chief, 
and Jill and I are humbled to be with you tonight. Tomorrow, we'll be bestowing the Medal of Honor, the highest military award to heroic service members who represent the best of America, the backbone, the sinew, the spine of America. And on, Tuesday, on Thursday, I will bestow the Presidential Medal of Freedom, the highest civilian award to extraordinary Americans who embody and endure the enduring character of this nation. All of them, all of you, are reminders that we're a great nation because we're a good people. It's because of you. I've never been more optimistic about America than I am today. An optimism that digs deep, never gives up. That's America. That's America. So in this day, amid the storm and strife, may we commit ourselves to a principled patriotism, to the large and complex mission to protect and make a more perfect our union, make real the declaration of our independence, and ensure that America is forever a place not marked by the thirst for power at any cost, but by a covenant of trust and hope and promise. Happy Fourth of July, America. May God bless America and may God protect our troops. Enjoy the day. Enjoy. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thanks. I just met your son.